<laughs> the final champion, guys. Who would have thought it's Volibear? Let's do it. Who dares challenge the wild? Okay, okay, here we go. Um, okay, Volibear first. Nine mana, 10 10 from Freljord. Play, play Relentless Storm three times. Each one that targets a different <laughs> random enemy or the enemy nexus, if none. Okay, R uh, rip that, Rex. Uh, Relentless Storm, deal four to a unit. If it's dead or gone, deal two to the enemy next. It's literally rip that, Rex. Isn't this like the exact same wording as rip that, Rex, too? <laughs> okay, round end, you've dealt 50 plus damage, and it's a round end. Wait. Okay, so you need like board clears. So the only thing that I know from playing Swain with Freljord is that Swain levels so freaking fast if you use stuff like Avalanche and Blighter Ravine and whatnot. 50 is a lot, man. But hey, uh, Volibear is like 20% if he gets one hit in. But if Volibear gets one hit in, you've probably won the game too. So, pfft. no, this is insanely hard. It's also a round end. Okay, but what does Neela and Janna do against a 10 10, right? If you're playing the region with ramp and you're having like, you're playing the sigils. All right, uh, let's, just, let's just go on. Let's see what more there is to see. Okay, I didn't quite read that one, but we'll get to it. Okay, so Titanic units with eight plus attack or health. We've seen that one. To cut my thread, grand boast, tiny bee. Your rage will leave you nothing to protect. All right. Place your faith in me, and your destiny shall unfold. Jenna, I beg you, reveal oh, my path so good, to man. Oh. Storm Lord, Look at the cards again. Look at the cards again. Hold fast to your hope in me and in one another. Some good music. Four mana Volibear in hand. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. your storms harder, Janna. Okay, that looks good. What is water but ice that is weak? There can be no ice Water is weak ice. Okay. What all is dark and cold, I shall remain. Okay, okay, that level up is actually at the same level as Aurelian Soul. I have to see it again. I have to look at it again. I can't. I'm sorry, Jeff. Oh my god, that's good. When all is dark and cold, I shall remain. That is so freaking good. Oh my god, I love it. There's no way, man. Bro, why did I ever think for a second that I was going to play a puny 2-3 with Brash or a 2-4 in Piltover? Bro, there's a big bear here with like the best level up in the game, dude. All right, uh, Overwhelm. Get to Overwhelm. Play and attack. Play Relentless Storm three times. Each one targets a different random enemy or the enemy nexus if none. So you get it on attack when Volibear levels. Other allies have Overwhelm. Okay, so yeah, no, you just win the game. This is literally, this is Aurelian Soul level of, uh, level two. You, you, you win the game. Like, if Volibear level, you've won. Yeah, you win when you levels. It, it's literally like, Aurelian Soul lets you play a zero man of Living Legends. Uh, Volibear lets you just attack with everything, that, uh, get Overwhelm, play the Relentless Storm to deal more damage to blockers, and just, just win. Yeah, no, the game ends. What's really awkward, though, is that Volibear levels on round end. So what if you have, like, the attack token, and then he levels... And then you have to wait your defending turn. Everything gets overwhelmed, with, which doesn't really do anything. And he, and he has an effect, uh, attack effect too. So that doesn't really do anything on defense either. That's, uh, that might be like a small issue for the deck, but hey, I, <laughs> I don't care at this point, man. That looks freaking sick. So good. Oh. All right, big Butler. Big board clear. You Is that a nine mana card? Me. What? The snow is red from our foes. What just happened? The Why is there a land rose and a Citria now? Okay, uh, here are all the cards. I have no freaking idea what I just looked at, but Volibear looks awesome. Oh yeah, let's keep watching. Actually, you're right. What is there at the end? Do not fear the rapture of conquest. It blinds me not. I'm sorry. 
Wait, so we go from failure to I okay, hold on. Neela, Neela, listen. Neela, hold on. You started from build spotter, then you went to PNZ and failure, and now you're going to Shadow Isle. That is listen, I'm a jungler. That is not efficient pathing, okay? That is that that's Shadow Isles. What do you mean fiddle? Fiddle isn't in the Shadow Isles. Okay, since he's like collecting people for her 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 team to take down monsters and whatnot, what if it's Yorick? Yorick is like the only good thing like a friendly fella left in the Shadow Isles now. All right, let's look at these cards one by one. So we have Volibear, we've seen that. Relentless Storm, we've seen that. Okay, champion spell. Eight mana slow. Deal four to all ally units. Oh, wait, deal four to all units except Titanic allies. Create a Volibear in your deck. That's, that's, like, that's like a big board there. Okay, four is actually a good number. Uh, this is like... <laughs> It's literally Avalanche deals two damage for four mana. So this deals four damage for eight mana. It doubles everything. It makes sense, right? Eight mana is a lot. It is. The most interesting part about this card is probably that it will level Volibear super fast, right? It levels Volibear super fast. So, ah, but does that matter? That's probably not good enough, is it? One thing I will say is that I have tried to play with stuff like Icequake and Wings of the Cry Phoenix, which deal three. And very often, the breakpoint, like, for good removal in Ruterra is four. And I think that might actually make this a little bit better. It's eight mana, though, but you are in the ramp region. Like, what if you're ramping to just clear the board for four? Um, hard to say, man. You're probably going to be the only one that plays Titanic Allies, but this is going to be a dead card if you're playing a Volibear Mirror. Oh, no, it's Titanic Allies. Never mind. It deals damage to everything except your Titanic Allies. It, it's kind of like the, uh, the Darken card, right? Where it kills everything except allied Darken. Yeah, and this is the regular one that's main deckable. I think this is like a little bit better than it seems, but it's not great. I, I, it's probably not great. However, Neela and Janna seem to be pretty strong. And a deal four to everything will clear their board every single time. Every single time you clear the entire Neela and Janna board. And that might actually matter if it becomes a... Uh, a meta deck. And it is an elemental, yeah. It is an elemental skill too, which could matter. Which could matter. I am main decking that. I mean, you're you're even less likely to play this as like the Volibear champion spell, right? Like, I feel like if you have Volibear on the board, you probably have much better things to do. Janna's 5? No, Janna starts as a 2-4. But once he levels up, yes, he's a 3-5, yeah. Um, I think it's a little bit better than it seemed, but it might not be main deckable. A 16-mana spell, Clash of Giants. Summon two random Titanic followers. I cause one less for each elemental spill, spell or skill you've played this game. Max 10. Okay, so now we know how that Volibear in the trailer got that Citria and the Ladra. Okay, no, this suddenly makes a lot more sense. Uh, wow. That is like, that is a really, really big card. I love that Froward is getting stuff like this. Interestingly enough, you can't actually discount this with the Sigil, right? Because these are not Titanic units. They're like Titanic units inside a spell, so you can't discount it. Yeah, it's Volibear fighting wrong. I'm not sure. I, if there are no more, like, big allies that you can play, I, I think you might actually play this in your Volibear deck. Like, all the board clears are elementals. I feel like this might actually make you play a Piltover Falior deck. Where you play like the, um, the the spells that summon birds too, and like some of their removal, I I think this might be pretty good. I think this will very often just be six mana. Oh wait, you can play this with the um, you can play this with the build trotter card, the seven mana helmsman or something, and then you get this for zero mana. <laughs> oh yeah, and the one for build over that double spell, you just get two titanic followers, the uh, the the sea monster that isn't actually a sea monster, the six mana four four that doubles elemental spells. Oh man, this looks so freaking... I'm gonna play this in my Volibear decks, and I don't even care, man. I will not care. I will play this in my deck, because it's awesome. This is a content card, boys. We love them. We love those cards. Alright. Sky Splitter. Two mana burst. Give an ally plus one plus three this round. Elemental. This is a, uh... This is a form-up, but different. This is a very good card. Okay, this okay, this card might not be played in Volibear decks, but this is a very, very, very important card for Feljord. This is actually just very good. Yeah, you actually have, like, a reason to go to Feljord for, like, mid-range strategies or, like, uh, the Overwhelm strategies even. Like, it might not be great for Overwhelm because you want attack more than you want health. 
But this is like form up, but the stats are distributed slightly differently. This is really, really big. It's also much better for formidable, yeah. This card is so good. This is, this is a really, really important card for Feliord. We need stuff like this for Feliord to make it more like a generally good region instead of just being really specifically good. I've talked about that multiple times now, where a, a sentiment that you see a lot on Twitter and Reddit is Feliord is weak. Even right now, I saw it like a, um, a few days ago or yesterday, where people were saying that they were disappointed with the cards that Feliords are getting because they look weak. Like all those Titanic units, they just look more the same. They look like they're going to be weak because it's just big dudes and it isn't something that happened to be meta in the past. But cars like this, like I disagree, by the way, I disagree about that. But cars like this make you much more likely to actually pick Feliord as like your secondary region for a deck. I think this is huge. This is such a good and nice car to have in the game. Is it broken? I don't even know. But just getting a combat trick that will actually matter is so insanely good. The fact is elemental might matter too, but who knows? I don't really see enough elemental payoff right now. Maybe Clash of Giants is just good enough. We'll see. We'll see. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy that this exists. Very happy. It's good. Three mana slow from Feliard. Invocation of Thunder. Draw one. All right, it's broken. Summon a Sigil of the Storm. Elemental. Yeah, okay, this, this card is insane. Uh, Freljord got draw. It's a draw card for Freljord! Wait, this is actually nuts. Wait, this is so good. Draw in Freljord. And it's basically ramp. This card is insane. Oh my god. Sky Splitter and Invocation of Thunder. What? Three mana ramp. Yeah, ramp. The, the thing is, we saw the 2-3 that summons a Sigil of the Storm yesterday. And I thought that was good. Because what you want to do with this deck is, or the way I see it being played, is you want to play like one Sigil of the Storm before turn six. And then on turn six, you want to play Rond. And then Rond gives you three Sigil of the Storms. And that means you can play a 10 drop or, you know, a nine drop in the case of uh, Valibear. This is insane. This is so good. This is so good. This is not ramp. It's just play a unit one turn earlier one. Yeah, I mean, that that is basically ramping because you're playing something expensive earlier than you should this is very 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 good draw one is just so insane for decks like in failure that want to do that kind of stuff failure has never had ramp or they've had ramp they've never had draw they've never had good draw getting this as like a piece of the deck that they want to play and then also doing something relevant right and drawing one is just so good it's elemental too so Clash of Giants, like, the more I look at it, the better it gets. It's so, so good. Love this. Love seeing this kind of stuff. Four mana, three, two, with tough from Valyard. When you play an elemental spell or skill, forge me. Whoa. Okay, that's actually, uh... Wait, that's really good, isn't it? It's four mana, three, two. I think this might be insane. This might give you a reason to actually play the, um, the time and dedication cards, like the card you get from the 2-3. I don't think you're going to play the Orn Landmark, and then basically your weapon gets plus 2, plus 2 instead of... Oh, actually, I don't know if those are elemental. Never mind. I don't know if those are elemental. Uh, never mind. No, it's elemental spell. That's really specific. Elemental spell or skill. It is tough, though. So what I could see with this card is you play this on 4, you put a weapon on it, and then you try to protect it with the Sky Splitter. And then suddenly it gets really big. I don't know what kind of deck we want to play this, but it's an effect you can't really ignore. It's an effect that could easily just snowball out of control. It's potentially insane. But how good are elemental spells in decks that care about also having a weapon and also forging it? That's like, that's the puzzle that's a little bit hard to uh, actually figure out from the way I see it. You have the Avalanche Bird on five. Yeah, no, I mean, see, forging this isn't bad by itself, but you really want a weapon on top of it. And then suddenly you're playing, you're paying four mana for the unit, plus probably like two mana for the weapon. And then also you have to play those elemental skills. That might be like too many pieces that need to come together for this to be good. But yeah, Valibear does play a elemental skill three times when he's summoned. So that helps with this. It helps with Clash of Giants. It also helps with Berserker Ursine. But I'm going to assume that as soon as you have Valibear on the board, he's probably just going to be very good at winning the game anyway. I, I think that might just be all you need, really. 
It's Volley Orn 100%. I doubt it, man. I don't see it. Vo uh, Volley Bear is a Titanic unit, but Orn is not. Orn is a small little 5 5. This is kind of playing it when Volley casts his storms. Um, if you have this on the board, if you have Flame Caller Caprine on the board, and then you play Volley Bear, it will forge three times. Because these are three skills, right? We saw that in the trailer too. Orn is a tiny little midget. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Volley Vane. Volley to Leah. Bro, I'm gonna be real chat. I'm going to be completely honest. I actually think it's Volley Bear with like the good sigil cards, like Invocation of Thunder. Uh, and Volhir's Prophet. And Rond. This one. You play Clash of Giants too. And then you play, okay, hear me out. I know you guys are gonna think I'm like high or something. And then you play this. You play this. And you play this. And then you just play like a bunch of Avalanche. And Shock, Splitter, whatever the bird name is. I think these could actually break it. I think this might actually just be really good. Because they're elemental skills. Maybe you play Janna, but probably not. Listen, what you do is you play these cards to kind of have something on the board early. Like you have a 2-1 for 1 mana, that's pretty good. Um, then you play these ram cards, the sigils, like I said, Rond. And then you just play She Who Wanders on like turn 7 and you win the game. And then if you also clear some of your birds, you just play Clash of Giants to win even harder at that point. I, I think that's how you play this deck. That's how I see it right now. This is, this is going to be a different ramp deck than we're used to. Uh, I, from what I've seen on the chart, I believe Winter's Touch, the four mana ramp card, is elemental, but the Wild Mysticism isn't. You can updraft your expensive stuff if you have too many. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, that's exactly the point. Yes. Agreed. For that reason, you might play Janna, but I still don't really think so. I love that they're printing this in the same expansion as Janna and Neela, by the way, because Janna and Neela seem to be going super fast with a bunch of draw cards, cheap units, low stats. It seems fun to play, but I'm really glad it's like balanced out by a really, really big freaking bear that just take like a magma serpent with him, a berserker your sign. Everything is just ginormous. Everything is really expensive and really cool. And that's probably what, what little Timmy like me is going to play. Yeah. I, I'm going to love Volibear. This is probably the most excited I have ever been for failure cards. I think this is so insanely cool. Orn was cool, but ultimately didn't really excite me because I, I kind of low-key hoped that Orn would be something about crafting his own weapon, and he didn't quite do that. Before that, we had, like, Lysandra, which was just Thralls. And as much as I think Thralls is, like, cool, it's really, like, straightforward. It's always the same deck. During Battle City, the Freljord card we got was Nar and Udir. I liked Udir. I liked Udir, but it, it's, it wasn't like super exciting. It wasn't really like big. It was kind of like mid-range that wasn't quite good enough to compete. Volibear looks huge, man. Volibear is so cool. I am going to love playing with the big boy.